Many people in that part of the west side where this child was murdered say crime there is out of control and the sheriff's office is not doing enough to keep families safe. Jacksonville Heights falls in the second deadliest zip code here in Duval County, 32210, according to an I-Team investigation last year. Only 32209 in northwest Jacksonville had more homicides. News 4 Jacks reporter Jim Pickett has been speaking with neighbors and city leaders about what needs to be done. Jim? You know, Tom, I've reported on stories like this many, many times over the years where kids get caught in the crossfire, guns fired by other kids. I'm always asking what can be done. I'm always hearing basically the same answers. They're going to start new programs like the Jacksonville Journey or the Kids Hope Alliance. But today, again, asking those questions. But this time, I want to know what have we learned? People in Jacksonville Heights tell me they don't want to be identified because of the crime that's occurring in the area. It's just a revolving door of criminals. We know them. The sheriff always says, if you see something, say something. And we do. And the criminals get our names and our addresses and they harass us and there's no police presence. We've seen and have been reporting on those crimes in the last several months. Some examples in June, a teenager in critical condition shot near a restaurant on 103rd Street. Another shooting, a man stumbled into a gas station after being shot. And the children of one mother called 911 after she was shot by her boyfriend. These crimes go on and on. We did some research and found out that in the last four weeks in a two mile radius of where the little girl was killed, 49 violent or serious crimes have occurred. Among them, 37 batteries and six armed robberies. The city councilman from that area was just appointed to the position. Terrence Freeman says in the past, he has worked with the community while serving with the Jacksonville Journey. He was a former teacher and coach and says there will be changes made as he works with the sheriff and others to try and help. Do you think there are a lot of words and no action? A fair question. Um, I will say this. I, I don't care how many words there are. If there's just a fraction of action, that's a step in the right direction. Now, I believe that there's going to be more action following from the days coming forward. And some of that action will be coming from the Kids Hope Alliance. Their CEO says they have some money in their budget to make changes now by putting more troubled teens that are currently in the court system into their programs. We focus on prevention, that we focus on the, the therapy that they need. We focus on where, where the behavioral health issues that they have. And and we focus on supporting them with getting a job and getting them the life skills that they need to be a productive member of society. But when we go back to the neighborhood and those affected, again, this is what we hear. I've been here since 1972. We had a police presence then. We knew our local beat cops. They knew us. And the neighborhood was very quiet. It was tamed. It was a great place to raise a family. That's all vanished. I, I see more police presence at Publix than I see in our community. There were lots of ideas, but the main idea that I've been hearing is to get kids involved. You know, we're out here at Weedfield. There's a Pop Warner football practice going on, and that's what parents are telling me here. They need more activities like this to get the kids in organized activities instead of on the streets. Something we're going to be hearing about this week because the sheriff's going to be presenting his budget to the city council on Thursday, and you can bet at that time they're going to be talking about crime prevention programs. We're live on the west side. Jim Pickett, Channel 4 the local station. Jim, thank you. Our coverage continues right now on news4jacks.com. We've posted surveillance video released by the sheriff's office as they try to find the person who killed seven-year-old Haiti Rivas Villanueva. Just look inside this story right on the homepage.